Hey guys, welcome back. I'm really excited today because this is the first review with all new improved lighting and a little bit of improved background on these tabletop reviews until I get my layout up and running. I've got some better lighting rigs, some lighting that diffuses the light evenly, allows you to see the model better. And what better model to introduce this better lighting than on this Athern Genesis GP50 Phase 1 locomotive. Now this is DCC with Tsunami sound equipped. So we're going to see what you get in this Athern Genesis locomotive. Let's go ahead and get started. Now you hear it all the time, the MSRP for this is $269.98. However, you'll always get discounts at your online retailers, brick and mortar hobby shops of your choosing. So this is the Athern Genesis GP50 Phase 1. Nice classic Athern Genesis blue box. Blue and gold glossy coating. Athern News Flyer, Athern Warranty Card. And the Athern Manual, which in this case goes over the GP50 series. Talks about handling and maintenance, DCC and sound functions. Has an exploded parts diagram and several more pages of content. CV programming, lots of good stuff, and GP50 prototype pictures. So when I'm looking at this model, I can just either pull it up on the internet or look at some of these prototype pictures. The warranty information, which is a one year limited warranty, so a 22 page manual from Athern Genesis. Now, to the locomotive itself, here it is in the case. Very small locomotive. Typical Athern packaging with your plastic and your foam. And we surround this with soft plastic to protect the model, foam inserts to protect the handrails, and then you see here these two. I call them truck trays. Maybe I'll coin that phrase, but basically hold your trucks in place. So, to prevent as to prevent uh, further damage or any damage during shipping, transit, etc. These locomotives have a long way to go. So we'll go ahead and get the foam inserts out for the handrails. Take a look at this locomotive's detail, but before we do. Let's take advantage of our improved lighting and actually zoom in on the locomotive a little closer. Okay, we are all zoomed in and ready to go over some of the details of this locomotive. Start for the front, you got the snow plow, you have MU hoses with silver tipped ends coming out the end, McHenry couplers. You've got low ditch lights below the anti climber there. You have the front handrails, you've got the nose mounted bell. You have the horn, got two incandescent bulbs in the front, number boards on each side of the bulb. You have the cab window shade, the cab window itself with interior cab detail that's going to be very hard to pick up on this review. I probably won't be able to show you the inside cab detail. You got the firecracker antenna. As we work our way towards further back, you've got the dustbin hatch, the blower housing here. You've got some nice compartmentalized details showing the each individual carp, uh, compartment. And Union Pacific, we will deliver on the side. All the printing is clear and legible, even the very small printing and warning labels down under magnification. You've got the exhaust here. As you work your way back to the dynamic brake housing, dynamic brake fan, and the grate on top, dynamic brake area back here, the T vent. Further back, you've got some radiator fan grills here and the radiator fans. Now, in addition to that, you've got these really ultra thin handrails. And Athern, I think, really captures the prototypical thickness of the stanchion and the handrail. They catch a lot of grief about if they should be thicker or more durable or metal. But when you do that, you compromise a thickness to some extent, and then the prototypical thickness goes away. So that's just my take on it. You can always have your own take on it. 
You've got some grab irons, separately applied grab irons all throughout, sand filler hatch, and a lot more detail to go over. Now on the front of this nose, I want to zoom in a lot to show you guys a couple of details that really sticks out to me. One of those details is this nose handbrake ratchet that's carved into the side of the nose here. You got the sand filler hatch. You also have the separately applied grab irons on the front and those really small windshield wipers that are just the right prototypical thickness. They captured that without being too thick. You see some models with those real thick plastic windshield wipers on them. These have actual thin, prototypically correct, in my opinion, windshield wipers. So a lot of great detail on this model by Atherin. Let's go ahead and flip it around, take a look at the other side, and then we'll get into operation. On the other side of this locomotive, you see more of the same, but as always, I'm human, and there's some things I forget to point out. One thing is you've got adjustable cab windows. I don't have the uh, actual dexterity to get to those windows with my fat fingers, but they do move open and closed. You look over here, you see a compartment door on this side. I compare the other side where the blower housing is. Kind of shows you the detail that Atherin goes into to get these locomotives prototypically correct. So it's really cool to see a manufacturer doing that, and I've always uh, commended Atherin for doing the little detail stuff that matters. Working our way further back, again, more of the same, the compartments along the side. Look at that fuel tank and truck detail. Just amazing detail on this locomotive that Atherin went to. And it's not a light locomotive either. For being as short as it is, it has a pretty good weight to it. Unfortunately, I'm not fully operational on the layout yet. I will be able to run trains on the layout here within the next couple weeks uh, at some extent, even though it may be a, just a large loop of Bachman Easy Track until I get foam laid and the layout completely constructed in, in terms of bench work. But you can tell it has some weight to it, so it has some pulling power. I can't give you a specific number like I usually do on pulling power, but you'll just have to take my word for it that it has decent weight. You got the rear headlights on the back, again incandescent bulbs, separately applied grab irons all the way up and down for this ladder, access to the roof for the crew. You've got the rear handrails here. They've sturdied those up. They used to pop out, their, the stanchions used to pop out of their holes all the time. They don't anymore. That's good. You got the MU hoses on the back end along with stairs with the white painted edges for safety for the crew and the white painted handrails at the edge for safety for crew. You've got coupler cut levers and those McHenry couplers again on the back end that are plastic. All right, that covers all the detail. Let's get into operation. Some sounds and operation of this locomotive. Let's start with the bell. Now that's that nose mounted gong bell that we showed you earlier in the, when we were covering details. Horn. Short horn, which is F3. Go ahead and do a grade crossing for you. Well, there's that. There's other functions just outside of obviously the bell and horn. You've got F4, which is the dynamic brakes. So F4 you can hear pretty clearly, it's like a humming. That comes out of this section right here, the dynamic brake section, which in the real world assists these locomotives in stopping faster. You've got the lights, obviously, which we'll cover in a minute. You've got F8, which silences the locomotive, it puts it on mute. F9 is a squirrel release. So you can hear F9 again. F10 is the coupler.
And that's about it for this diesel locomotive. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lights real quick before we go into actual smoothness of the drive and we'll wrap the review up. So here are your headlights and ditch lights operated obviously by F0, the headlight, ditch lights, F5. So turning those on will turn those lights on respectively. Now the ditch lights and the headlight are incandescent bulbs as we mentioned before. When you sound the horn here, the ditch lights stay steady. That's because on UP lines, the ditch lights don't flash, so that's accurate for the prototype. And I have seen some manufacturers that have gotten that incorrect, so it's good to have that right for UP. All right, let's go into operation and see how this thing moves under small speed step increments. See what the motor control's like. So we're testing this Atherin Genesis drive under slow speed steps. You'll see that the current speed step is actually at one. It's cruising along nicely without any interruptions, any pauses or jerks. So it's running very nicely in that direction. We'll also test it in reverse direction here in a moment as it makes its way across. I'll kick it up a little bit. You should hear the RPMs kick up. To grind it to a halt really fast there and switch direction. So just for a second here we'll check reverse direction at a couple speed steps. End up at three. Nice smooth action there going in reverse. So excellent motor control, nice smooth Genesis drive in this steam or in this diesel locomotive. So nicely done overall by Atherin. I really don't see much to complain about on this model of the GP50. So let's wrap this review up. For an MSRP of $269.98 and the available discounts that you can get from your brick and mortar hobby shops, online retailers like trainworld.com. If you're interested, see the link below. I should be able to have a link directly to this product on their website. There's lots of discounts to be had out there, so I don't think you'll be paying $269.98 unless you want to, or stock is limited. You can order through Atherin's website direct for that MSRP, but I think it's a nice locomotive. Now, am I easier pleased than some? Maybe, but overall, there's not a whole lot to pick about on this locomotive. A nice detailed representation of the prototype. You've got nice smooth drive, nice tsunami sound. You've got the gong bell. You've got the horn that sounds nice and has a good bass to it. It's not doesn't have that tinny sound that can have uh, if you don't take care of the speaker inside correctly. And overall, I think it's a great locomotive. I don't think there's a whole lot of improvements Atherin can do on their products overall. There's always the incandescent LED debate, but you know there's fans on both sides even though there is a heavy LED contingent. But overall, I think it's a great job from Atherin. So be sure to check them out. Check out the GP50 Phase 1. Lots of different schemes to be had on this locomotive. So if you have any questions, as always, let me know. And I'm always taking review requests in the comments or messages. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.